Mr. Davis is the new music teacher. He was born in Harrogate, a small town in the UK. He likes to travel and get to know new people and their traditions. He worked in Australia, Europe and Africa. It's his first day at work in the USA and he is a bit anxious but also excited at the same time. The school really looks modern and he is thrilled with its looks. He is talking to Mrs. Richards now and he has his first class today. He is going to play his favorite instrument to students, the kudu horn, also called the kudu zela. It is a musical instrument from South Africa and Africans use it to play music and to signal danger. In 1896 it arrived in the US. In 1907 Americans started to use it as a call for scouts to gather and it also became a symbol of scouting. The kudu horn also inspired another instrument. It's the vuvuzela, a cheap plastic horn. It was really popular in 2010 at the FIFA World Cup. It has a loud annoying sound and soccer fans use it when they go to a soccer match, especially in South Africa. Oh, talking about unpleasant situations. A few years ago, my boyfriend invited me to meet his parents. He comes from a Russian family and his mom prepared dinner. I wanted to be polite and bought a bouquet of 12 beautiful roses. My advice? Don't buy two, four or six flowers, because Russians see it as a sign of bad luck. Better buy one flower or buy some chocolate. His mother looked at me angrily all the time and she thought I was quite rude. The most important gesture difference between our cultures is touching the top of someone's head. When Americans touch the head of a child, they show that they are kind and gentle. But my nation believes that our spirits live on the top of our heads. So, it is quite an impolite thing to do in China. Yes, there was a funny situation when I opened my restaurant in America 15 years ago. I was really frustrated in the beginning. Whenever I asked my guests how they liked my meals, they all showed the hand gesture zero. I didn't know why they were dissatisfied and what I did wrong. My friend explained later that this gesture means okay, really good. I was so thrilled. John Lennon was born in 1940 in Liverpool. As a child he used to draw a lot and play instruments. His mother taught him to play the banjo and she bought his first guitar. He became famous as a member of the Beatles, the worldwide popular rock band. They started to play in 1960 and they first played in the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Their first single, which Paul McCartney wrote in 1958, Love Me Do, came out in 1962. They became popular worldwide and recorded many successful albums. Unfortunately, the band broke apart in 1970. John got married for the second time in 1969 to the Japanese artist Yoko Ono. They moved to the USA in 1971 and released his single Imagine the same year. They promoted Love and Peace and he continued his work with Yoko until 1975, when his son was born, he decided to retire from music and become a good father and husband. He returned to music in 1980 and published his album Double Fantasy. Sadly, that same year in December, a fan shot and killed Lennon in New York. His song Imagine still shares Lennon's dream of a united world, the world of peace and love. Jenna and I are best friends. We met 10 years ago while we were studying at New York University. We were roommates at the dormitory and then we started to work for the same company. We rented an apartment close to the company. Once, in 2011, I was sick so I stayed at home. Jenna put my phone next to the bed in case I should call her and then she went to work. Two hours later, she decided to call me, but nobody answered the phone. She rushed out of the office and hurried back home. When she got to the apartment, she saw me on the floor. She pulled me out into the hallway and she called help. Then, she went back into the apartment and realized that gas was leaking. She quickly opened all the windows to air the rooms. She called our neighbor to help her, and they took me outside. When the rescue team arrived, we were sitting in front of the building. It all ended well thanks to Jenna. She saved my life that day. When I was about your age, 
I often went out with my friends. We liked to spend a lot of time together, and some of us already started to play some instruments. When we grew a bit older, we liked to stay out late, and the places we went to were often full of cigarette smoke. Then I started to smoke too, but I was already a musician, and I wasn't happy with my way of life at all. I also didn't feel very well. I didn't always have enough strength to blow through my clarinet. That's the instrument I was playing at the time. Soon I realized that this kind of life was not really my cup of tea, and I decided to change it completely. And that's how my new adventurous and healthy life on other continents began. Now, my youngsters, how about your generation? What do you think about these bad habits? I am not pleased with my questionnaire results. It's true I don't believe everything they say in these magazines, but I must definitely change something in my life, and I must do it fast. I work too much. I sleep too little. I should eat much better food than I do, and I must find some time to spend with my friends. The situation with my physical activity is even worse. There is no recreation in my life at all. A lot of my friends do at least something to work on their fitness, and all I do is sit and work, work, work. I promise, as soon as this project ends, I'll take up some sport and start to read all those beautiful books I got for my last few birthdays. And last but not least, I'll go out with my friends and see some nice play at the theater or a movie at the cinema. Dear listeners, we have just received wonderful and interesting news. Sven Hagemeyer from Germany, who is 26 years old, has set a new world record for longest birthday ever. He has managed to have a birthday which lasted for 46 hours. He flew over the zones, crossed the international dateline, and extended his birthday for almost two days. He has beaten the earlier record, which was 35 hours and 25 minutes. A girl from Pakistan celebrated her birthday in a similar way in 1998. She flew from her hometown to San Francisco. Sven's birthday lasted 635 minutes longer. Sven started his journey from Auckland in New Zealand. His next stop was 2,292 kilometers away. He landed in Brisbane, Australia, and then he got on a plane for another 7,556 kilometers. He landed in Honolulu, in Hawaii. His wife was waiting for him at the airport, and they met exactly at midnight. This hasn't been the most enjoyable way to celebrate a birthday. It was not easy to spend 790 minutes on the plane. He's happy because he has beaten the record, but he's planning to have a more traditional birthday next year at home with his family and friends. He hopes to see his name in the Guinness Book of Records. They haven't said anything yet, but let's keep our fingers crossed for Sven and hope that they will put his name on the list. Happy birthday, Sven, and congratulations! What a curious turn of fate! Now that Dora has caught that bouquet, I must think hard and think fast. I was planning to propose to her soon, anyway. But how could I go about it? I've been a musician all my life. Shall I sing her a serenade under her window? No, that's old-fashioned. Maybe I could organize a concert at school and play the clarinet myself, and then propose to her in front of all the others. But she might feel unpleasant about it. No. What if I put an engagement ring around Bugs's neck and let him deliver it to her? She loves that dog of mine. But that's ridiculous, like a kid's movie. No way. When I think of it, preparing a romantic dinner at home just for the two of us could work best. She is a romantic soul. I could play some nice music in the background. Hmm. I think I've just made up my mind. James, old sport, it seems you'll be hooked soon. Speaker one, don't play in front of my window. Speaker two, call me tomorrow. Speaker three, open the window, please. Speaker four, I am very tired. Speaker five. It is raining outside.
This is a true life anecdote about Albert Einstein and his theory of relativity. Years ago, Albert Einstein visited many universities in the United States to promote his theory of relativity. His good old chauffeur, Harry, always accompanied him. He was present at all these lectures, and he usually sat in the back part of the room. One fine day, Einstein finished his lecture and was just coming out of the building and getting into the car when Harry stopped him and said, Professor Einstein, I've heard your lecture about relativity so many times that I believe I could explain it to others exactly as you do. Very well, said Einstein. I'm going to Dartmouth next week. They don't know me there. You can give the lecture as Einstein, and I'll take your place as Harry. And so it went to be. Harry gave the lecture to perfection without a word out of place, while Einstein sat in the back row playing chauffeur and relaxing for a change. But just as Harry was leaving the speaker's podium, a young assistant stopped him and began to ask him a question about the theory of relativity, a question so difficult that only a great mind could answer it. Harry said to the assistant, The answer to this question is very simple. In fact, it's so simple that I'm going to let my chauffeur answer it. Personal computers have been with us for more than 40 years. Many of them became too old in just a few years. But there are people who still like old computers because they remind them of their childhood. Their hobby is called retro computing, and it is a very interesting hobby. Retro computing is very popular in the USA and in some European countries, and the number of people interested in this hobby will become even bigger. This hobby often starts when a computer user realizes that computers which were expensive are now cheap. It is possible to find old computers that still work, and some of them can even be connected to the Internet. Nick, your story about creating every single little sound for a movie is amazing. Can you tell us some more details about that? Of course. It's really not easy to create hundreds and thousands of sounds to make a movie effective. It takes a long time and a lot of concentration. We often have to use all sorts of things you can imagine, like clothes and shoes, boxes and bags, dishes and other household objects. So, if some things have disappeared from my home, they have definitely ended up in my studio. <laughs> so, how do you record those sounds? You must have some special technique, I guess. It can be really funny. Actually, it's good that people can't always see what we are doing. For example, you have to stand in front of a microphone and walk in one spot just to produce the sound of a man's heavy walk or women's high heels or rustling clothes and bags or fighting fists and clapping hands. Oh yes, don't think that all the kisses that you hear in movies are recorded on the set because they are not. It was actually the sound designer who was kissing the back of his hand in the studio. <laughs> Unbelievable! I've never heard that before. Do you have some anecdotes to share with us? Well, now that you've asked me, there was this commercial I was doing once for a foreign company. On the screen, you see a large group of women who are attacking a fortress full of men, and you can hear the sound of the fighting crowd. Well, all that crowd, with dozens of voices, it was mostly me, yelling and shouting all sorts of things into the microphone. And then, I just mixed them all into the noise of a massive fight. What an amazing story! And what a job! Thank you for sharing your experience with us. Thank you for listening.